Uh, let's call the meeting to order at 6.33. Um, the first item on the agenda is the approval of the minutes from the regular meeting held on January 28th, 2020. Make a motion to approve the minutes for January 28th, 2020. I will second. Is there any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, next item on the agenda is uh, Sustainable Connecticut. Um, over the last year or so, we've been looking into a, um, a program that's offered by the state in conjunction with Eversource and, and a couple of other energy companies. It's known as Sustainable Connecticut. It's evolved to this. It's, um, it's an interesting way. Sustainable is not all that it sounds like with the name. It's, it's, it's a good fundraiser actually for many different um, activities in the community. Parks and Recreation is what is used as the biggest example in, uh, at the conferences that I've been at, but you can use it for buildings, for roads, however, however you need to. You can use it for uh, uh, this information that I just gave you. will give you a chance to read about it. I'll give one to Jim so we can talk about it some more. Okay. But it, um, it's the towns throughout the Connecticut or throughout the state are able to um, to become a member of this sustainable Connecticut, and you do that by simply a, a, a um, resolution that we would we would put okay. together, and that's that's in the back of that. Um, and then we can use it for. Uh, I'm just looking for some examples that they give, but I'll use Park and Rec as the example because that's what I remember very clearly. Um, if you <laughs> probably pretty close to this, but thanks. Um, but that'll be good. Uh, the example is if, if, say, a very simple example, say you wanted to swing a new swing set down at the park or, or equipment down at the park that costs twenty thousand dollars. You get on, you start a crowdsourcing th uh, thing through Sustainable Connecticut, and they will they will they will match up to fifty percent of what you raise. So if it's a $20,000 project and you can raise, you, you raise up 10,000, you get the other, the other 10,000 for that. This goes up to, I think, 25,000 25, is, is the per project is what you can get. So you can get a $50,000 project for half price. Um, it, it really, some of the examples that they were giving is it, it brings the community it gets the community directly involved. So if, say you're doing the back to the swing sets or the parks and recreation thing. Mm -hmm. A lot of the, the folks that um, live nearby there or that utilize that will be participants in the fundraising and they'll call their friends and all that kind of stuff. Um, <clears throat> and this is free money? Free money, oh yeah. Just gotta, it's 50% of, of whatever the cost of the project. Um, we can, you can fundraise a quarter the town can put in a quarter, and stand, and they'll they'll match that that fifty percent. Mm -hmm. So it really can it can really be a very uh, we'll economical way to, we'll take to do that kind of stuff. You right. just have to raise um, the money. For we need to set up a committee, or, or at least have a liaison. And uh, Carol Jones, our Parks and Recreation director, was at a Parks and Rec uh, meeting. Um, and Carol, if you want to talk about that a little bit, that'd be fun. Yeah, I went to the Connecticut Rec and Park Association and we had a, um, somebody presented on this from the, uh, his name is E, and I actually have his card. Um, but anyway, he works with the um, CCM kind of doing this. So he was the community outreach manager for the Sustainable Connecticut, named E. But it really does sound very interesting. A lot of the programs that we've already done can be um, put towards the certification. You know, the towns work on these. It's a voluntary program, free, and you can work and kind of aim, um, do sustainable projects and then gain points towards certification. Um, but some of the ones we've already done, the upgrade of lighting in town, you know, some of these would already apply. Mm -hmm. But we have to get, like Angus said, do the resolution first get on board and then we can um, either decide to do some programs, it can be municipal programs, it can be private programs, like if the library wanted to do something that would probably fall under one of their, and then it's kind of a grassroots effort to raise money um, and then everything is matched and they've just tapped into some um, 
foundation money or you know uh, philanthropy money, and, let's, and so it's a way that I guess the, initially the idea for this program came back in 2016-17, and it's really towns working with towns and municipalities and businesses and trying to get some money without going through that whole cumbersome grant writing. You know, this is a way to kind of just get funding right to these smaller projects. Yeah, this evolved from a program that we that the town was involved in, um, but that was directly related to the energy companies. And you would get if if you um, completed a certain amount of whatever that project was, like the lighting at the elementary school, that would give you a certain number of points. That would if you got a certain number of points, that led to a certain number of dollars that they would they would just issue towards another project. That was that, that was like Green Connecticut or something like that I can't remember the name of that. But that evolved into this, and this is now not just energy, but for a lot of different things. So, the question I have: just say we want to do a swing set at Devon's Field. That's a twenty-five thousand dollar project. Mm -hmm. Do we have to raise that twenty-five thousand or the twelve thousand five, or can we take it from a line item, or does it have to be raised? You have to have a minimum of 20 donors, um, but those donors can be a smaller amount, and then you can the town can still put in money, and then it goes through another fund like I think it's called uh, IB I O B Y. Mm -hmm. that's, that's my question. Does it again? If we just move money from, you know, if we had money in our park and rec, and we want to do a swing set, we have all five, but you're saying we need 20 donors. You need you need a minimum, a minimum of 20 donors. But you can plan on that project, and, and you know it, it, you can budget. Say it's the twenty-five thousand dollars swing set. You can budget eight thousand front that we already have in that line item, mm -hmm. and then just raise the other okay. twelve five or whatever that half of that twenty-five is. You, they'll only get as they'll go to fifty percent of whatever the cost of the project is. I just didn't know if it was on one hundred percent fundraising. No, 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 not project. at all, not at all. Okay. Um, but it can be. There will match funds even if they come from the town and not yes. from not, the town. Yes, it can't come completely from the town. Right. But, but yes, you can spend that's town funds. Okay. That's, that's nice. Yeah, it's a great program. It seems as if it's a great program, and, and it's really just a matter of trying to uh, trying to you find someone to manage it. Carol's stepped up and said she she wants to uh, to try it out. How long is the program last? I don't think I said I was. I said I was happy. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be happy too, I think you said. So, um, you know, that's, that's as close as you can get. Yeah, Jack, as far as I know, it runs indefinitely. You have, yeah, to, you have to update it. CNN. There's a limited amount of money for calendar year, so you have to get your project approved. They said once, if you would get your project approved, it's pretty fast. They can jump right on and do the ground. Um, crowdsource fundraising right away, and then the, the monies are matched right away, and so there's not a lot of, the, mm -hmm. you know, the paperwork, but. Mm -hmm. Right. So yeah, it runs, runs for a while. I'll read the resolution, or the proposed resolution now, and then we can, uh, you know, you can look at it, Jim can look at it, we'll talk about it in a couple of weeks, and if you guys are, are on board, then we can, um, we can adopt it. But, um, Whereas Sustainable Connecticut is a comprehensive statewide action-oriented voluntary certification program built by and for municipalities with the vision that Sustainable Connecticut communities strive to be thriving, resilient, collaborative, and forward-looking. They build community and local economy. They, they equitably promote the health and well-being of current and future residents, and they respect the finite capacity of the natural environment. Whereas Sustainable Connecticut is designed to boost local economies, help municipal operations become more efficient, reduce operating costs, and provide grants and support and additional support to municipalities. Whereas Deep River embraces an ongoing process of working toward greater sustainability, selecting which actions it chooses to pursue from the voluntary menu of actions provided by Sustainable Connecticut. Resolved by the Deep River Board of Selectmen that we do not, that we do hereby authorize whoever that's going to be, maybe Carol Jones, to serve as Deep River's Sustainable Connecticut contact person for the Sustainable Connecticut Municipal Certification process and authorize him or her to complete municipal, regist municipal registration on behalf of Deep River. Resolved that to, to focus attention and effort within Deep River on matters of sustainability and in order to promote Deep River's 
local initiatives, and actions towards sustainable Connecticut municipal certification, the Board of Selectmen establishes an advisory sustainability team or revises the role of an existing committee to serve as a sustainability team. I think we would, I'd, I'd like to just get a few folks that we can hopefully get to volunteer to help out with that, Carol, on that. Um, resolved that the first meeting of the sustainability team must be held within 90 days of passing this resolution and that the team shall meet as frequently as needed but no less than quarterly. Resolved that the sustainability team shall report annually to the municipal, uh, to the Deep Rivers, Board of Selectmen on the progress of its activities towards sustainable Connecticut certification with reports and presentations made publicly available. So if you guys take a look at that, take a look at what the program can be. Carol, if you want to share that, I'll make copies and get it to, to uh, Jim and Dwayne. Um, yeah, this was just from the uh, CCM website. Okay, yeah, that's, that's great. Thanks. Mm -hmm. So we don't have to take any action today. I just want to discuss it, answer any questions. Any questions that might come up from the public, we're happy to try to answer if anybody has it. If not, we can move forward. Interesting. Okay. Does it have any limitations as to what you can spend the money on anything? Um, I would imagine so, but I, I haven't looked at I don't think you could step, spend it on roads. You could probably spend it on a sidewalk. You could send it, probably spend it on a, a street lamp in a, in a public parking lot or at a park or something like that, but I don't think you could spend it on a, a new uh, pickup truck or something for the town. Yeah. yeah, there's actually nine categories that you go on their website, Sustainable Connecticut. It'll um, kind of break some down to um, things that are like environmental, um, energy parks, uh, education for the community, uh, just different things that are sustainable, you know, like. Um, gardening, and I mean, it can kind of cover everything, the lighting, like I said, that's great, that lighting, save energy, you know, it's all about trying to um, help Connecticut sustain, you know, being covered. Right. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Okay, um, next item on the agenda is tax collector refunds. Um, we have uh, six refunds that need requests. Uh, some one is a court stipulation, the rest are overpaid. Um, and it totals $8,925.83. So, if we can get a motion to uh, to authorize the tax collector to refund, make those refunds. I'll make a motion to tax collector to pay refunds of $8,925.83. Okay, I will second that. Is there any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, brings us to audience of citizens. Um, and if you all don't mind, just for a, uh, I'd like to talk a bit about the, um, our solid waste program here in Deep River. Uh, Mira the, uh, is our recycling agency. They're up in Hartford, based up in Hartford. It's where we and I think about 59 other towns um, bring our garbage to. Um, they operate a uh, waste to energy plant that is, I, I want to say it's 30 years old, it might be a little bit older than that, um, but that has experienced a lot of breakdowns. It needs to be rebuilt. They're going through the process of trying to, uh, trying to either figure out whether they're going to be able to rebuild it. There's a lot, of, a lot of controversy about whether it should be rebuilt, whether it shouldn't be rebuilt, whether it should be built somewhere else. Um, there's all kinds of controversy about that. But um, it does, in fact, save us. Right now, it gets it gets the garbage out of Connecticut and out of the out of out of landfills. We don't have enough landfills in Connecticut for the garbage that's being generated in Connecticut. So, if Mira goes defunct or um, is unable to to build this particular program, this particular waste to energy plant, they will, the option is to right now to, to truck the garbage out to. Um, Ohio or, or somewhere in Pennsylvania. Uh, there's a few few landfills that, that that can take it. Massachusetts has a couple, but their life expectancy is a, just a couple of years. So by the time this happens, so what Mira is suggesting and what they're asking for right now, what we need to act on in the next couple of weeks, probably at the next meeting, um, is whether or not we would pay a not or. or sign a non-binding informational statement of interest. It really is just telling them that of the 59 towns that, that are around, would you 
agree to, if everything comes together, would you, would you continue as a member? Um, it doesn't cost us anything and it's absolutely non-binding. But what it says is that the tipping fee, which is what it costs to bring a, a ton of garbage up there, which we now pay $85, is going to go up to $92. This, this tipping fee, what they're expecting, beginning in 2025, is a maximum tip fee will be set at $145 a ton. So that's a, it's a walk of an increase that will, um, and, and that does not include that, that still provides for a zero uh, ton for recycling and, and, and all that. So while we used to actually make a little bit of money on recycling, that's zeroed out. Um, and and that's, that's been the case for the last year anyway. But there is no market for any recycling. Um, what it does is it gives us, this gives us and it gives Mira some time to get this plan together, but it gives us some time also to, and also a little kick in the, kick in the behind to start thinking about how we generate garbage, how much garbage we generate, and how, what we're going to do about trying to keep that cost down. That's, that's, that's probably a, a it's, it's over a 50% increase in, in what we're paying, so. Um, I don't think that we can sustain that cost. I don't th and, and this is a this is a maximum. The Mira is projecting all kinds of different numbers of where it's going to land, depending on what they do with the plan. They they just don't know. Uh, my question is the maximum, or when's the maximum? Could the maximum go into effect on 2021? Well, no, it'll be 2025. And that's it. So, yeah. so yeah. we won't get to that. 2021, they can't say, hey, by the way, we're going to charge 140 now. No, we're signed up for them until uh, through that time. So no, they can't go. To, they can't go to 145. Until 2025. Um, but what's the increase they can can do? They, they incrementally, they could work up towards that. But they don't. You know, that'll that'll be agreed upon in whatever whatever um, contract we sign with them will will be agreed upon. Um, and so, if we didn't go there, where would we go? Where'd we go. Well, we can go to uh, where a lot of the other towns just go to private haulers, and they. they end up in Ohio or Massachusetts. Um, have, we looked at, have we looked at? We have looked at some of them. They're all right now right around 85 to $95 per ton. Okay. Um, where they're pro none of the private guys are projecting what they're going to go to. Nobody's expecting it to go to 145 that I've heard anyway. Um, I would like to look into that. And, oh, yeah. You know, a little well, closer just to absolutely. do our due diligence because that's a lot of money. No, absolutely. And the, what this does, though, the, and this is important to remember, that this is just a conceptual agreement. Mm -hmm. It doesn't bind us to anything. It allows Mira to go to the state and say, okay, we have these towns signed up. They're at least interested in continuing with us if we can. And, and Mira has been a, a good um, a good program for us. Um, the thing that I don't like about it is it's a, not not this. This is this I have no problem with this non-binding statement. I, I want you and Jim to look at it, yeah. and to talk about it, and think about it. Uh, but what I what I don't like about the mirror is it's a 30-year commitment. Um, uh, so if we sign on with them in in 2020, just when it, which is way too ambitious, it'll probably be 2022 before we sign on with them. But if we sign on with them, it'll be till 2052 that we'll be giving our garbage to Mira. And that, that's something that I'm not, and, and a lot of towns aren't, aren't happy about. So it's- um, with, with, no, with no limits. Well, no, there, there are limits. There will be limits in the contract. Right now, they can't go, they can't go over a certain amount. I don't know what that is out there. For the life of the contract. Um, which is why they're, they're, they're where they are now. Uh, because they, they, they're, they're I, I can't say that they're losing money, but they certainly would. You would get that impression if you were at a meeting with them. Just that to sign on for a 30 year agreement. Oh, no, I know. It's oh, a little crazy. concerning. That's crazy. Um, but um, it may, in fact, be the best, the best. Yeah. That's not just for us, but for the community. Like we're talking about the, uh, the sustainability in Connecticut, and for and for for the country, really. But, but you know, what are we going to do with all of our waste? And we need to get a, a good program going that 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 produces less waste. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, so and actually, I'm sorry to get off track with that, but that leads us to Mira again. If we produce less garbage, then they need to charge more per ton 
because they won't have the income to keep the place running. You know, um, so, but we do need to produce less garbage. Uh, and, and we, at Sabre, has got a good program that just started on and I hope to get those people, the folks there into town. It's just an educational thing. It's how we can compost more, um, do, do a, lot more a lot of different things with our, with our waste and, and, and recycling and how we recycle the single stream just doesn't seem to be working for the, for the state. Um, you know, we need to get more you know, individual plastics and bottles and all that kind of thing. The bottle bill, I'm not a big fan of, but it seems to be get, getting some strength. We might see that um, in this this uh, legislative thing. But I want you, uh, and again, I'll give this to you. And you take it. The big number scare me. That's just scare the heck out of me. No. But, but that's where they're going anyway. Um, we are going to have to produce less garbage. Um, and I don't know how we're going to do that, so we're going we're to study it. I mean, London has got a good program growing. Stonington, I think, has got something going, and a couple of towns up in the northwest. Um, and we'll, we'll learn, from, learn from what they're doing. Um, but again, if there's nothing for us to do tonight, uh, but I'll, I'll get you this information, and we'll talk some more about it next. But we do have to act next week, whether it's a yay or a nay. Yeah. Um, but we do have to act at our next meeting. Thank you. Another quick question, I guess. Yeah. Do um, you know what mirror is? Is that the trash burning plant in Hartford? Yes. Yeah. 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 How, much, how much tonnage do we go through a month? Do you think? Our town? Yeah. I don't know. We we budget $90,000 for it. For just for, um, no, for, for the year. Oh, for the year? Yeah. Um, and that's just for just for the um, household waste. That doesn't include the recycling or any of the other stuff. And at ninety dollars a ton, that would give you an idea of how much tonnage we have. Yeah. Um, so that's it for me. For uh, it's the citizens. Anyone else? I just wanted to add that sustainable Connecticut. Some of the towns got money to do um, education for recycling. And they've set up like the compost bins. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. So that might be yeah. something that we can. That would be great. Mm -hmm. If we decide to do that, that might be a project that we can. Sure. Yeah. Okay. We said goodbye to Ruthie Sunday. Yep. The second mayor. It was a very big turnout. It was a nice trip. Yeah, it was. Mm -hmm. Very nice send off. Um, so there's nothing else. Can we talk a little bit about the Origins project? Sure. Um, so, I think I understand it, but tell me if I know. So, we paid a company, we got a grant, we paid a company to, to review, mm -hmm. to correct our language, mm -hmm. and to um, make sure that we're in compliance with state laws and statutes. Mm -hmm. um, so, now we have a new book. Mm -hmm. So, do we have um, access to what the changes to your ordinances are, what they mm -hmm. know? So well, I don't know if we have a highlighted version. The code book itself is the list of changes. Um, and it, the draft of the code is available online. And the, our, our usual list of ordinances is just that. It's a list. It's language pulled from the town meetings that, that set that ordinance in place, which is why it's so cumbersome. Um, so that is still up online. And then the new code, the draft of the new code is up there. So you can. Compare the two. Um, I did. I did come up with a few examples um, of the kinds of. I hate to say changes because the law themselves, the laws themselves, do not change. Um, it's you know getting rid of the excess verbiage. So, um, for example, when it comes to our um, our annual town meeting date, it. What our current list of ordinances online says for just our annual town meeting date it says to permanently amend the town resolution to specify the date of the annual town meeting on the third Monday of the month of May, starting in fiscal year 1990 to 91, and henceforth. The original resolution may be found in the town acts book, volume 5, page 204, May 23rd, 1990, volume 7, page 185, history, original resolution dated 125, 1946, volume 5, page 204, 205 designates the fourth Monday of May, 1946, and every year thereafter. The attorneys looked at this and pulled out the, the law 
which says the annual town meeting shall be held on the third Monday in May of each year. So it's that kind of thing. There's a lot of language in there. It's confusing. It's got history that doesn't even really apply anymore. The dates that they started, that they made this decision doesn't really apply. Um, so it brought it down to the actual, um, the actual law. So it was, that was one of the things that they've done. Um, a couple of ordinances, and this is all just in the first chapter. We had, um, we had an ordinance that established the Deep River Visiting Nurses in 1976. And again, it's, you know, it's a long, lengthy thing. But the thing is, that, that board was, was dissolved in 2010. So it really doesn't need to be listed as one of our laws anymore. It no longer exists. And another one was um, our local probate court that was established in 1947. But in 2011, the state mandate um, regionalized the probate court system. So we don't need that listed. You know, all it does is, is make it difficult to understand where we really are right now. Um, and as far as the repeal of state statutes, and this one, this, this really explains why I wanted to have this one, and why I thought this was worthwhile. Because on page four of our current list of ordinances, there's one that says, ordinance providing for participation in the Connecticut River Valley Council of Elected Officials. And that was established in 2003 and refers to Connecticut General Statutes 4-124C through 4-124H. And then right after that, it lists the resolution providing for the establishment of the Lower Connecticut River Valley Council of Governments established in 2012. And it references um, General Statutes 4-124I through 4-124P. The thing is, the latter caused the repeal of all the the GS, the 124A through H was repealed when that second one was done. So by having this, this company analyze this, they were able to take it, consolidate it, because they both are saying essentially the same thing, but to update it, they, they consolidated it and, and put in the, the parts of the ordinance that that the state still does, still has, you know, it's removed the repealed ones. So again, it's just, um, it's just updating it, making it current, because we don't need to know what happened back then. And none of that is ever lost. That's all in our Town Act books. They stay there forever. They are preserved until the end of time. So if you ever want to research any of this stuff, it's all right there. But as far as the code, which is our current laws as they stand today, um, that's it. Basically, are just saying what the real laws that are still in effect and still matter to our town are. And then, you know, the best part about it, as far as I'm concerned, besides the analyzation, which I think was necessary, um, everything is coded. When you say it's codified, you're basically finding all these little things, you're applying a number to it, and then you can index it. So it's easy to find. You know, we don't have an index now. You have this table of contents that's pretty general, and you're like, I, I can't. You can't even, you don't even know what word to pick to find what it is you're looking for. So now, every law has got its own code, it's organized properly, and there's an index. So they're going to be easy to look up, easy to find, and easy to understand. So it's really, I mean, it's a very, I'm very pleased. It's a good thing for the town. It brings us into the 21st century. Um, and like I said, nothing, nothing, none of the laws are being changed unless they were changed without our, our knowing about it. Yes? Oh, there's. Yes. Is the town having an attorney make sure that all of this transition is has been captured accurately? Or are we just assuming that this mobile, this outside source entity that we've hired got this right the first time? There's a lot, potentially a lot of assuming going on that this is right. And if it's as far reaching as it is, it just seems like we're taking this thing a little bit too light and that so if you could answer my first question, is an attorney checking what has been given to you as supposedly the new gospel? Unicode has attorneys. It is an attorney who specializes in state law and municipal law in the state of Connecticut that did this review. So and then each of the departments checked over anything that they wanted to change. And it's, there were a couple of little things they said, oh, that's, I don't think that should be changed that way. And they put it back the way it was. Um, but this is a company that's had, so allegedly having their own attorneys check something that we're paying for. It's still not giving us the comfort level. Who is checking it on behalf of the town besides a third party that we're paying directly? This is this again. There's a lot of assuming going on that that brand X company 
with their attorneys has gotten this thing accurate. Well, all ordinances and all taxes, and we're the ones that are, in, are the risk bearers here. Who is checking this to make sure this has been captured accurately? That's that's what has been the latest the buzz the last week. Otherwise, you are, you gentlemen potentially are assuming that that this has been captured through this entity with a lot of emails back and forth or what have you. That's all. I, I think it's fairly safe to assume <coughs> that attorneys do know what they're doing and the fact that this company is one of the three state approved companies and we can't just hire anybody. We hire people that the state have reviewed and they've had some experience with and they, they believe they do a good job. And like I said, when we got back what they wanted to do, it was certainly amongst, amongst the departments that actually work with these laws every day. They're very familiar with what it is. <coughs> I don't think they saw anything out of line, which not too many did. Most of them completely agreed with what was done. Um, and so that was, that was, I guess, the third party check. I, I understand what you're saying. Well, well, I hear it loud and clear. My question back to you, Amy, would be, has there been any other towns that have done this recently? And if so, did they have a, a third party attorney? Right? That's what you're asking, correct? No, he's asking if we but if, if we have a third time, but what third what? party attorney we do like the way when I'm running businesses, whatever, anytime that business uh, I would outsource something, I'd have the company attorney throw the holy war on it so I could sleep. And then I was asking Amy if maybe Clinton just did it. Did Clinton hire their own attorneys? What my question should have been spelled out. I didn't spell out exactly the way. Just to make sure we're all not assuming something. I was just wondering if any other town has done this upgrade. And most, of the, most, most of the towns in Connecticut do this on a regular basis. Okay. And it really hasn't done it in many years. Do they hire? We, I don't know if they do or not. Okay, and that's yeah. my question, and I think it's what you're asking for, correct? So our town attorney is the person you would think. Our town attorney is. go over it. I'm She's been giving it. She, you know, she yeah. didn't send back anything that that said that. Uh, and I think that's that negated the gentleman's concern. So, so, is there any protection? Like, I mean, I think we're digging kind of deep, but as, as far as going down the road, it seems to be a problem with an ordinance. Some kind of question, or or they have any uh, responsibility or liability with uh, the changes they might have made, or? I don't think they would have liability unless they did something wrong. And I, well, that's what I mean. If they did something wrong, they would have a problem. If, I mean, ordinances get revised all the time. I mean, if, by, and let's face it, what's out there right now, a lot of it is obsolete, and it's been out there representing us all this time. Um, so I, if we adopt the code book and somewhere along the line say, hey, wait a minute, that's not right, then we bring it up to town meeting and, and change that ordinance and just make sure that that gets fixed that way. Not to belabor it, but if you just see what's created the buzz in the last week or so is that pick another topic similar to this, and if the MO is that it's okay because the state is throwing holy water on it, but we're absorbing the risk is, is the town of Deep River, this could be multiplied times all kinds of project, to topics. So something as important as the ordinances, the fact that it, it just seems so casual is is spooking people. That's all. And that it is not. If, if you folks had just said, we have an attorney, the town attorney is, is checking on this to make sure that this is captured accurately the first time, we're good. We would be we would be fine, but right now it's it's a, a staff member who we highly respect, and nobody else is is zooming on. And if if I was in one of your seats after running an organization, that's the kind of stuff I would never assume that somebody captured accurately without having someone check it. Well, here, here. and I think he said when these came in. They lived in the town hall for probably four months, five months, while we were all reviewing. Every department that any ordinance had anything to do with reviewed that ordinance. They were subsequently sent to the town attorney. The town attorney, I don't believe, went through every single word and made sure that they were all right, but did review them and sent it back. Um, sent it back saying, I'm, I approve this? I would, I would not suggest that her language was, was as 
defined as that. She said she did not find any problems with this. Um, if you are, if you and the town are insistent upon it, we can spend a whole bunch of money. This is usually a thirty thousand dollar project. We can spend a bunch more money to review these and ensure that municip 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 municipality. municipality, whatever the name of the company oh, is, Municode, Muni um, has done a good job. That's fine with me. We had an opportunity to catch up with what communities around the state have been doing um, and have been trusting and have been um, keeping themselves up to date. Deep River hasn't done this for as long as, I, as long as I've lived in town. I'm not sure that we have ever done it. Um, so it seemed like a good opportunity for us to do that. If we, as a town, believe that we should, um, should, spend, some, should spend some of our own money to confirm all of this, which is really just reading it again and doing all the same work that Municipal Munici just Munici did, um, then that's fine. That's what we'll do. Or we just say no and don't do it and leave it as, leave it, as it is. Um, I'm almost more concerned with some of the other things that, you're, that you've said tonight about what leads to distrust of what's what's going on and what's the buzz of this week. And I've only seen a couple of emails back and forth, so I don't really know it's what you mean by that. That, that, that you know. um, it's, it's somebody has checked it, that's all. I mean, it's just, a, you've all, I don't know how many other folks here, we would outsource things all the time for a third party to generate something, but at the end of the day, somebody would have to make sure, go to the board or whoever and say, has this thing been, uh, are we comfortable that this thing has been captured? Because we're all our next on the line. Are we comfortable? Are we paid the attorney or whatever? We're in a small town. We don't want to spin your wheels. But just as long as we all have an understanding that we shouldn't assume stuff that is going to change. This is going to be it for as long as we're alive now. And that's all. And maybe that's fine. And we'll all get out of here and leave them alone. Let you do your job. But it just seems to be too casual of an approach on an important topic. That's about as best as I can articulate. There was nothing casual about this. There was nothing casual. casual. It's, it's like I said, the state has to approve these people. They don't take that casually. This grant is not a casual thing. And it's, I've been working on this for about two years. It's been anything but casual. They have a team of lawyers respected lawyers, state approved lawyers who are familiar with the law. They have combed over this with a fine tooth comb. We've been back and forth with emails. We've questioned things. They've either answered satisfactorily or they put it, you know, done what we wanted them to do. But there's been nothing casual about it. It's, this has been a long, hard road and a worthwhile one. And I think the finished product is, is really good. It speaks for itself. And I, I have complete faith in that company. My last suggestion is, Based on all well, the town meetings, I think it's been a little uh, uh, feisty in recent years. I would just recommend that we just take it one more step and just give the residents more, uh, two more seconds of line in whatever report and whatever, the, just to say, here's what we're doing and why, and here's how the process is going. You don't know an explanation for everything you do, or you're never getting anything done. But since, since things have been misinterpreted, confused, something as important as this topic on a go-forward basis, just say a little more than less about the process so everybody can sleep in the town. That's all. And I think the, the general consensus is that's still not there, that it's transparent, but, but give us the, the, the benefit of a little more, um, we're good on this, and here's why we're good on it, and that's all. And maybe that, if I, Maybe that's not reasonable, but it seems to be reasonable. And I just don't know how much more we can do. I, I thought that we had done that. Um, you know, we, we brought this to the town. There is no deadline. We're not going to vote next week on this. We brought it to the town at our last elections meeting, put it out there that this is what's happening. Um, we've continued to try to respond to questions that, you know, emails that come in. You came in, you sent us an email, so we, we responded to it. I don't know how else we can get more open, then this is what we're doing, this is why we're doing it, this is how we did it. Um, we wouldn't, it wouldn't get past the Board of Selectmen if we weren't confident in the work that was done. We have confidence in, in our town clerk. Our town clerk has confidence in the people that she hired. 
That's that's my answer to that. Um, if we can, if you have a suggestion, send us an email, and we'll look at. We'll try to try to adopt that. Hang on, buddy. Right. So, so I think from um, residents who aren't necessarily in that every board meeting, they are in, um, as engaged as, as you all are. It felt um, kind of surprising, and so the, the message was: um, This has been revised. Um, got a for it. You can vote on it. Um, and, and I think people were left with, well, what does this really mean and how did this process work? So maybe the same, um, you know, the same email list that you use for other things, perhaps you send out and say there seems to be some, um, some concern in town, just want you to know that this has been vetted by, you know, all the town departments. And I mean, I think that's the kind of reassurance that people would be looking for, because you are asking us to vote. Mm -hmm. on this. Yeah. So we need to feel confident that it's been done correctly. Um, and I think that's, well, that's how we hear this. You, know, you come to the meeting and you tell us that you're not comfortable, that you don't trust what we're doing. So we will try to do a better explanation as to how we present it to you. But I, can I also say, you know, there's just because nobody knew that this was coming. I mean, I just heard about the sustainable thing for the first time tonight. Everybody here heard about it for the first time tonight. But some sort of went into so getting it here. But these are the ordinances of the town. Right, and this is the first time. There has time to be a first mention of it. It is, it's the first time. I'm sorry that it took you by surprise, but I mean, it just is, it, this is it. And here we are telling you about it and explaining the process and getting you copies to review and have the book on review in the office and here to answer any questions. No deadline. It's not like, hurry, hurry, you gotta, let's push this through. So I don't, you know, everybody has to hear about something for the first time. And it's, that there's no other way to do it than to just say, here it is for the first time. When you say you were working on it for two years, did it start two years ago, or is this? I was working on the grant for two years. You have to apply for the grant, and the grant that is allowed for this town is smaller because we're a smaller town. Mm -hmm. So this took two years for the grants. So but are you increasing the language or decreasing the language? So you go from a book from 300 pages to 150 pages? Yes. Okay. Because so it's taken out the cumbersome part, and then we're left really with the basic plot. So I, I was just wondering, like going forward, what the key milestones are, and like what the timeline is for those different things, and what the what that process is for just the key milestones. There is no timeline on this. We don't have to. We don't have to do it. Um, but at the last elections meeting, what what I suggested is that we will gauge. We'll spend a month gauging the public interest in this, and determine whether we want to have it, bring it to a town meeting sometime in the next month after that. Or if we want to just delay this until the, the big budget meeting, the town meeting when we vote on our budget, and this can be a part of that vote. So, um, so what are the key milestones then? The, the milestones the that there is no timeline on is that the Board of Selectmen will approve it and move it to town meeting. Then the town meeting will be scheduled at some future time. So there's there are two milestones. There's the Board of Selectmen, and then there's the town meeting. Okay. And there is no timeline. If, I mean, if everyone is, can do this one ordinance a week, if that's what the town wants to do, we can do that. I, I, there's no, no well, schedule. I will say, however, um, this was done based on what our ordinances were in 2016 when the project was started. There's been a couple of updates for a couple of ordinances that I'm now sitting on because we would have to get this approved before I could then say, OK, this is what's been passed since, and it will be incorporated into the code. If we wait too long, um, it'll be more of a review. It might become a new grant project. So How many pages is the? Uh... I don't have a number. How many pages? I mean, this is draft. Uh, the draft I want is 212 pages. It was 160, wasn't it? A lot of. I think it was 165, but a lot of those pages are just. It says reserved for future use. This chapter is reserved for future use. Or, you know, all these pages, but there's this much on one page and nothing on the back. So it looks it looks like more than it is. There's so we're voting on the book. Voting on the book that that yes. Voting on the code, the code. is what it's called. With yeah. today's technology, is that PDF or anything like that? Yeah, it's been posted on the website. Oh, it's on the website, it's 212 pages. I just was actually looking at it this afternoon. Oh. Because <laughs> I like to work with them. <laughs> 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 
Um, Jack, you had a question? No, a uh, question, just an observation. <coughs> uh, it, the, the town ordinances have not been revised, right? No. The only thing that's been revised is the presentation for ease of, of research. Mm -hmm. So uh, if, if there's any question, you can always go back to the more complicated version and, and it's the same. That's what Amy said. Those, those will always be in the record books. Right. Those are, we're not eliminating. Right. Right. So uh, mm -hmm. I'd like for them not to be online at some point because a lot of it just doesn't apply anymore. It's, it's, it's confusing. I don't think it's good to have it up there. But mm -hmm. well, it sounds like people think that the ordinances have been. The laws themselves are not changing. Yeah. So well, I think the originals and the proposed changes are available online. Yes. Well, probably the best draft of is the people. And I think that people should be on. Well, I should point out when I say the new, when the new draft is online, it was it's put it's on the main page, the home page of the website, and it's put in there as news or announcements. It's attached to that, so you're not, you know, if you look up ordinances, that's not what you're going to find. You'll have to find it on the home page with the announcement and message from the town clerk. So, so that document doesn't have the edits contained within it, right? No, no, it's just the draft. Okay, just the draft. I think what people are concerned about is that ordinances or town ordinances can actually affect anybody. You know, if you're walking down the street with your hat on sideways, now it's illegal. So I, mean, I think that's why there's such a concern about it. That's still in there, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> no, that part of my concern is um, people might go to what's currently online and see something and think, oh my God, I didn't do that or I did not know that was a law. And they don't bother to go down and read the whole thing. And at the bottom it says this was abolished in 2000. So it's not a law anymore, and yet it's still up there, appearing to be one. Yeah, so it's, it's very important in the town, so I, I just wanted to say that I think that's the very important yeah. piece is how we go about it. But and, like I said, it's not written in stone. If something is found to not be true, or we, we look at something and say, that, you know, I, I don't think the town should do that anymore, then you can, you know, bring it to the first election, bring it to the towns, and it can be changed. It's updated all the time. Mm -hmm. So, and sometimes new ordinances are introduced as the need arises, and that's how we do it. And one example of some of the acts was when people approached me and said, hey, they just did all this thing, and there was one single copy in Amy's office, and that's all there is. Maybe mm -hmm. fix that problem. She made the electronic version of that thing available and posted it on the site, and that can also be emailed back. So Amy was very forthcoming on that. This is not the way you reply in anybody's direction. But people sometimes will misunderstand what was done and why it was done. It sounds like it was a good thing that had to be done. Like one of the other folks said, Ways to, we have the same problem in our parish of Chester. Ways to communicate even clearer, sometimes we think we are, can also help out. On a topic that seems to have risen to the level of being pretty, pretty lasting in the community is the point that we're trying to convey. On topics that we're going to live with as residents for a long time, mm -hmm. go more than less on the communication of what. What is it about how you flushed it out, your comfort level of something? You can't do that on every topic every day of the week. We would never expect it to. But power ordinances or something of that level give us just spend a little more time on the you flushed it out and you're feeling good about it and here's why. And, and we can go off it when we're run, running our own lives. As you as you as I explained. That's what we started to do at the last elections meeting was the first public announcement that this was being done. That was the first step. From that, I think um, Amy put something out online. And from that, we've responded to, done other things based on some of your emails. I mean, I thought that that's what we were doing. We were trying to, we have to start with a first announcement. This is what we're doing. There is no deadline. We're like, hurry up, we're going to vote on this next week. Everybody has to learn all of our ordinances or, or any of that. We're just trying to express that we are trying to, to clean things up. That's all we're doing. Um, you know, anything else? 
Okay. We have a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. I'll second that. All those in favor? Okay, I'll call the special town meeting to order at 7.36. And um, the first thing is I'll take a motion for the town meeting moderator. And uh, I'll, I'll, I'll make a motion that Dwayne Gates um, moderate the meeting. Can I get a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Dwayne, the meeting is yours. Okay, I would like to uh, elect Clerk, Amy Winchell. I need a second. Oh, you don't need okay. you okay. can just appoint me. I appoint <laughs> Amy Winchell as the clerk, and Amy, can you read the, the call? I will. Uh, this is the legal notice for Town of Deep River of a special town meeting Tuesday, February 11th, 2020 at 7 p.m. in the Richard H. Smith Town Hall Conference Room. The purpose of this meeting is to approve actions of the Board of Selectmen's regular meeting of January 28th, 2020, appointments to Planning and Zoning Commission, Alan Parity, regular member, term to expire December 1st, 2020, and this notice was dated in Deep River, Connecticut on Monday, February 3rd, 2020. Okay, I need a motion to adopt the call of the meeting. So moved. Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. I need a motion to approve item one on the call of the meeting. So moved. Do I have a second? Second. Is there any discussion on item one of the call? Just that I'm very glad to have Alan take the time to come and join our Planning and Zoning Commission. I think he'll be a welcome addition to the group. He's already added as a as a as a um, as an alternate. As an he's already added to the conversation and, and made it a better commission. So I'm glad to have him on board. Same here, Alan. Thank you for serving. All right, uh, do we have a vote on item number one of the call? Sure. Well, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any against? The ayes have it. Uh, I need a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second? Second? Second. 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 Second.